So guys, in our previous video, we have understood about the mathematical intuition behind linear regression and multiple linear regression. Now we are going to understand some of the performance metrics that is used to determine whether the model is good or not for a specific problem statement. And the metrics that will basically be used is something called as R squared and adjusted R squared. Now let us understand what exactly R squared is and uh, you know what is adjusted r square and what is the exact difference between both of them now first of all let's go ahead and understand about r square and r square is basically given by the formula which looks something like this so this is r square is equal to one minus sum of square residual i'll talk about what is this residual and all and this is sum of square total okay so here a simple definition that you can probably see is that r squared is nothing but 1 minus ss residual that is sum of squared residual divided by sum of squared total okay now let's understand what is this sum of squared residual suppose if i say this is my problem statement let's say this is my x-axis y-axis okay and i have some of the data points which looks like this okay which looks like this okay i'm just drawing some data points over here our main aim is that we need to find out the best fit line so if you are trying to find out the best fit line with respect to this orange points these are my uh true output right so i specifically say all these points belongs to y of i right y of i are basically my true outputs right now similarly with respect to this particular point the predicted point is nothing but this part right so this i can basically say it is y of i hat right y of i hat y of i hat are my predicted points right so this is my predicted point 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 so i'm just drawing all my predicted point now whenever i try to find out the difference between them then in short i am basically saying that as this is basically my residual okay residual or error so if i probably try to find out this particular distance this particular distance this distance, this distance, this distance, and this distance, this is basically the residual, okay? Now, understand the definition over here. I am basically writing 1 minus sum of square residual. So, I can basically write this as with this notation, that is summation of y of i minus y of i hat whole square, right? So, in short, what I am doing, I am basically trying to find out the difference between y of i and y of i hat. Okay, and I'm doing all the summation of all this particular residual or error. I can also say this as errors. Okay, now this will be divided by sum of square total. Now, what is this sum of square total? Now, with respect to this particular point, I hope everybody found out, okay, this is my best fit line. But with respect to the y axis and with respect to all these y points, if I try to calculate the average, okay, so if I try to calculate the average, then you may probably be seeing that y of i average will come with respect to this specific point okay or let's say i'm just trying to calculate all the y of i points uh, i'm just taking all the y of i points and i'm just calculating the average now in with respect to this kind of distribution let's let's assume that my y of i is basically getting passed over here this y of i hat i will say okay so this basically indicates this is nothing but average of the true points that is y of i okay average of all the y of i now this sum of square total basically means if i really want to give it in a mathematical notation this is nothing but summation of y of i minus y hat y of i hat whole square so this basically means that we are trying to find out the difference between the true point and this specific point which is basically indicated by y of i hat y of i hat is nothing but it is the average point okay so from here to here i'll calculate the difference then from here to here i'll calculate the difference similarly here to here i'll calculate the difference here to here i'll calculate the difference here to here i'll calculate the difference here to here and here to here okay so this orange line that you see this is basically the mean of all the y of i points okay so this basically will be giving my r squared value okay now here you can clearly see that obviously just by a uh, simple understanding right you can definitely see that y of i minus y of i hat whole square this residual this this difference of the residual because my best fit line passes through almost near to all the true points right so this particular difference 
will be smaller number when compared to this particular difference, right? Because this is with respect to the average, this specific line. And obviously the distance will be quite big. So here I can definitely write something like this. I will write that it is y minus, let's consider this is a small number when compared to the denominator, right? So the denominator will be a bigger number, right? Small number divided by bigger number. So now when we do this kind of division, obviously we are going to get a smaller number itself, a smaller number itself, right? So let's consider if this numerator is a smaller number and denominator is a bigger number. Obviously, when we try to find out the division of this two, obviously we are going to get a smaller number. So one minus smaller number will be, you know, very much near to one itself, right? It will be approximately near to one. So let's consider that suppose if I'm getting 0 0.70, right? So this basically indicates that I am actually having 70% accuracy, right? Suppose if I get this specific difference is somewhere around 0.85, this basically indicates that I'm getting a 85% accuracy. Suppose if I say it is 0 0.90, I'm actually getting a 90% accuracy, right? So with the help of R squared, we are able to find out how our model is performing, right? And more this value, understand more this value, it is towards one, right? More accurate, my model is more accurate my model is more accurate my model is my linear regression model is okay but there is something called as overfitting okay which we will probably discuss as we go ahead uh, we are going to discuss about overfitting and underfitting just in some time we'll discuss about it how we need to identify whether it, the model is basically getting overfitting or not for that we really need to understand what is true in data test data validation data just give me some time we'll discuss about that as we go ahead now let's go ahead and understand about the second performance metrics which is called as adjusted r square now with respect to adjusted r square okay how it is basically different that also we are going to discuss with respect to the r square so here i'm just going to write my adjusted r square okay r square now guys if i consider this specific example let's say i have in my data set okay i have in my data set one feature which is called as let's say one of the feature is like size of the house okay size of the house suppose this is my data set i need to really predict what is the price of the house okay so I need to predict this specific thing. Let's say I have one of the feature which is called as size of the house. So I'm definitely going to write price over here. Now suppose if I have size of the house and the price of the house, as we know that as the size of the house, as the size of the house increases, increases, my price is also going to increase. So there is a direct correlation between size of the house and price of the house and this is usually happens in any any state or any region that you are probably seeing is staying right the size of the house as it is increases the price also increases so uh, and similarly when the size of the house decreases the price also decreases so here we can definitely find something called as a positive correlation right positive correlation a good positive correlation so when we have in this particular case a good positive correlation uh then what happens my r squared value probably increases right let's say this value basically increases now let's say in this particular case when i'm using these two features my uh, and let's say that i have actually computed my r squared my r squared value that was coming was somewhere around uh, you know 75 percent let's say 75 percent is nothing but 0.75 with the help of the same formula okay let's say with the help of this same formula that we have used over here we got 0.75 now what happened is that let's say I included one more feature after the size of the house I said number of bedrooms now you know that as the number of bedrooms increases right the price is also going to increase so from this I can definitely say as my number of bedroom and this is just a domain knowledge right when the number of bedroom increases my price also is going to increase so here also I can definitely see something called as positive correlation right so when I'm actually seeing this positive correlation, now if I go and probably find out my R squared value again, after I create my model and probably plot or get my best fit line and then apply this entire formula, okay, I am definitely going to see some increase. And let's say here, I'm just assuming that I got 80% accuracy. So this is nothing but 0 0.80. This is also perfectly fine. Now, similarly, when I try to add one more feature, with let's say this particular feature is location, and we know that with respect to location also, it is more positively correlated with respect to price, 
okay this two up more positively correlated so there are again chances that my r squared value will definitely increase okay my r square value will become 85 percent let's say i'm just assuming it has now increased to 85 percent now let's say that okay this many features i have okay this many perfect so many independent features i have and uh and this is my all my independent features and this is my dependent feature right now let's say that i have added one more feature now this specific feature basically says that which gender are going to stay in this house okay whether they i'm just adding one feature okay that does not make any sense okay and obviously you know that if i consider gender with price obviously just by common sense there will be no correlation with respect to price right anyhow no correlation whoever gender stays over there obviously price is not going to get affected right but if we add this particular feature which is not at all correlated with price and again if we try to probably solve this problem which again in the future i'll be showing you in with the help of practical example if i try to see the r squared value even though these two variables this input feature and this output feature are not at all correlated then also since we are applying this particular r squared formula there will be chances that this particular value will still increase but it will not increase by a bigger value so here you can see that i'm actually getting somewhere around 87 percent let's say okay i'm just assuming two more percentage got increased because the formula it works in that specific way of r squared is that as more number of features you keep on adding somehow the r squared value is going to increase okay and these all things i'll show you in practical also guys so let's say this become 0.87 but now there is some kind of problem even though this particular feature is not at all correlated with price here you can definitely see that my r squared value is increasing okay i did not prove it practically yet because i'll do the practical and show you uh, with respect to this particular problem statement also right so in this case the r squared you can see that even though this and this feature are not at all correlated still it is basically increasing right so this is the problem with respect to r squared right so this is the problem with respect to r squared problem of r squared even though you don't have a feature that is directly correlated with the output feature then also this particular value increases since uh, the formula is in that specific way we are just trying to find out the difference between residual and uh, difference between the mean of uh, which we basically say it as ss of total now in order to prevent this we basically use something called as adjusted r square now in adjusted r square what it does is that it penalizes with respect to every feature that are not correlated with the output feature okay so this is what amazing thing basically happens with the adjusted r square now in order to define uh, the adjusted r square we basically use a very simple formula so i am basically using r square or the adjusted r square so I'll, let me write down the formula over here and again uh, you do not know how the uh, formula is getting derived guys that is not at all important but instead we should directly use this kind of performance metrics so it is nothing but 1 minus 1 minus r square and i'll talk about each and every term multiplied by n minus 1 divided by n minus p minus 1 okay now let me talk about what is this n what is this p and all right so n is nothing but we basically say number of data points okay number of data points so that basically means in our data set how many data points are actually there okay and p basically indicates number of independent features number of independent features that we are using now guys whatever formula that we have written away with respect to the adjusted r square one amazing thing that you will be finding in this and later on when we do the practical implementation that thing will be clearly visible to you so let me just note it down over here and in the later stages in the practical part i will try to show it to you now n basically means number of data points p basically means number of independent feature let's say initially my p value is something like 2 so this basically indicates that let's say my number of independent features are 2 in this case let's say my r square is 90 percent i'm just assuming i'm just giving you a hypothetical scenario right if my r square value is 90 then if i try to apply the same formula with respect to r square adjusted then here you'll be seeing that i will be getting less than this particular r square value so here let's say i'm getting 86 percent okay now as soon as i increase p value then obviously you know that we have seen that the r square value will increase okay let's say the r square value has got 92 percent and let's say that 
additional one feature that we have added, the independent features is not at all correlated. Okay, not at all correlated, or it does not have a direct impact on that specific uh, output feature. At that point of time, you will be seeing that the R square adjusted value will get reduced. It will be somewhere around 82, 83. It will be less than the previous one, that is less than the 86%. Here I'm just giving you a hypothetical number. Okay, this kind of scenarios you will be able to see with the help of adjusted R square. Suppose if the additional independent feature that I have added is directly proportional to the output feature, one thing that you will be able to find out that it will increase and it will be greater than this 86%. If it is not at all correlated, then it is going to decrease. This is the assumptions I'm making it right now. Okay. Later on, when I try to show you with respect to the practical, uh, you know, you will be able to find it out. You know, I may, I, I guess like you may be thinking, okay, Krish, how did this specific thing happen? Just understand guys, when I am probably increasing the P value over here in the, with respect to the denominator, and when I start uh, multiplying or divide with this specific value, this kind of relationship will automatically be formed. So whatever problem that we had in the R square, will basically get solved with the adjusted R square. Okay, so for right now, just uh, make this hypothetical note uh, that I've actually made in front of you. Later on, I'll try to show you with the help of practicals also. So this was about the performance metrics. Most common performance metrics that we use is something called as R square and adjusted R square. And this same thing I will show you in the practical. And when I'm showing you in the practical, there are also some kind of assumptions that we made to make. Like over here, I spoken about correlation, right? Uh, and here also I showed you about like how R square adjusted is basically getting decreased. This is the formula that gets applied instead of this. So because of that, that specific value is getting decreased. Okay. So let's continue uh, the video. And in the next session, we will discuss about more practical implementation. Thank you.